All right, so let's do some counting problems. We got a couple of card problems and then we'll talk about rolling a few die. All right, if you choose a card at random from a well-shuffled deck of cards, what is the probability that the card chosen is a diamond or a king? All right, I see my buzzword of probability. All of my answers are between zero and one, as it should be, but I also see the word or. Okay. So I think, well, I've got an or formula. That was formula number one. Let me rewrite that here. So I've got the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So we got something like that. Now, I'm not gonna use A and B, I'm gonna use diamond and king, and I'm just gonna use D and K for abbreviations. So I want the probability of diamond or king. It's the probability of a diamond plus the probability of a king minus the probability of a diamond and a king. Okay, now we've talked about a deck of cards. There's a video up on Canvas for you to just see the breakdown, but let's just remind you. So diamonds, those are a suit in a deck of cards, and every suit has 13 of those cards. So I have an ace of diamonds, a two of diamonds, a three of diamonds, all the way up to a king of diamonds. There are 13 diamonds out of the 52 cards in that deck. And that's true for every suit. We're just focusing on diamonds right now, okay? So if I think about the kings, all right, every individual card, there are four of them. So there are four kings in a deck because you have the king of diamonds, the king of hearts, the king of spades, and the king of clubs, all right? So you have a king in each of your four suits. So I actually have four kings out of my 52 cards. All right, and then we need to subtract out any overlap. Do I have any cards that are both diamonds and kings? And the answer is yes, I have the king of diamonds. So I need to subtract out that one out of 52. The reason being, we counted this card here and we counted it here. So it got counted twice, so we wanna subtract it out once for balance. And we've got some fractions with common denominators. So if we remember from our math days, if you've got common denominators, you keep the denominator and then I add and subtract numerators. So 13 plus four is 17, 17 minus one is 16. And if you don't like that, you can plug this all into your calculator. All right, now 16 out of 52, it's not in simplest form. I, I can at least divide both of those by two. And ultimately it doesn't matter because my answers are in decimals. So I wanna find the decimal answer to this. So let me take 16 out of 52 and find out that it is about 0 0.308. And I can see that answer A is the correct one in here. All right, so let's take a look at a, another kind of card problem, all right, so that we become card experts. Oops, excuse me, by the time we're done with this. All right, I always wish I had enough time for a little field trip to a casino. It'd be fun to play this out. All right, so an experiment consists of choosing a card from a standard deck of cards and replacing it. Okay, so that replacing it is important. Um, if I perform the experiment 900 times, about how many times would you expect to choose a face card? All right, so why the replacing it becomes important is because that means each time that you're selecting a card, there were 52 cards to choose from. All right, if I wasn't replacing it, it would severely change the problem, but I'm replacing it. Okay, so it says I'm gonna perform this experiment 900 times and I wanna talk about how many times you would expect to choose a face card. All right, now this how many times question, take a look at that, that those answers there, these are not probabilities. Right? These are not relative frequencies, these are frequencies. So we're gonna deal with probabilities while we crunch some numbers, and then we have to convert it back to frequencies, which is fine, we can do this. All right, so let's think about what is the probability of getting a face card? We wanna start there, because it's asking us about face cards. Okay, and we're gonna do this, like I said, 900 times, how many face cards would you expect to get? And if I'm just thinking of it, if I'm doing it 900 times, I expect to get a, a good chunk of face cards. Right? I don't think I would get half face cards, right? Because if, if I'm doing it 900 times, 450 seems a little too high because I don't have half of my deck as face cards, so I wouldn't expect to get a face card half the time. 
Um, and I think 415 is probably also a little too high. So my guess is that I'll be somewhere between A or D. I don't know which one because those are, those are too close to each other um, for me to figure out, but let's, let's do this. All right, so face cards. So let's talk about this. How many jacks are there in a deck of cards? There are four jacks, right? There are four queens and there are four kings. So out of my standard deck of 52 cards, let me write this down, right? We have four jacks, we have four queens, and we have four kings, right? So I have a total of 12 face cards. So what's the likelihood that I'll get a face card if I just do this experiment once? Well, 12 out of 52. Let's see what that decimal simplifies, or that fraction simplifies into. It looks like about 23% of the time I'm gonna get a face card. Okay. All right, so again, this is a relative frequency. Let's go all the way back to chapter one. We knew if we wanted to get a relative frequency, we would take our frequency and divide by our sample size. Right? So what you have right now in this equation is you know the 0.23, right? You don't know the frequency, but you know in a sense that our sample size is 900, right? That's what we have. So another way of thinking of this is if you ever wanna go from a relative frequency back to a frequency, multiply by the sample size, right? I could cross multiply these. So if I actually wanna figure out the number of face cards that I'm gonna to expect to see, that would be equal to 0.23 times 900. Because again, if you see a face card 23% of the time, then 23% of those 900 times, I'm gonna to expect to see a face card. So let me just multiply this by 900. It looks like I'm getting 207.69. Okay, so this is 207.69. The closest answer I see in my A through D options is 208, so I'm gonna go with answer A. All right, so with that, let's, let's take a look at number 10. All right, so number 10, all right, it says I roll three dice. If, and I put that in bold for a reason, if I rolled a six on the first two die, what is the probability that the third die is also a six? So there's the conditional sentence, right, or conditional phrase, if. So when I'm rolling my three dice, you already know you got a six, right? And then another six. That happened, right? Already happened. You don't even have to fret on it. I already rolled two sixes, right? So if I rolled a six on the first two die, what's the probability that on that third die, I would roll a six? All right, so if I'm only gonna roll one more die, what's the probability of rolling another six? Oops. It's just one out of six, okay? Nothing more to it than that. This is a conditional probability. So if you've rolled two dice and they've already popped up sixes, what's the likelihood that the third die would roll up a six? Just one out of six. That is different than if this, if I, I know this is using the word if twice. If this hadn't been here, if it just said, what is the probability of rolling three sixes? That is a different question, right? So the probability of rolling three sixes, the answer would have been C. It would have been one six times one six times one six. But this has got the conditional sentence on it, so we gotta pay attention to it. All right, so we're gonna get over to part five. We're gonna do formulas only next.